This is a gray wolf. And this is a bill that Governor Brad Little just signed that could kill up to 90% of them in Idaho. For anyone living in Idaho, wolves have been a controversial issue for over 20 years now. And in this video, I want to share with you why I support this bill, but not for the reasons that you expect. In order to understand why, we need to back up about 30 years in order to get a bit of history of wolves in Idaho. A long time ago, gray wolves existed throughout Idaho. But the European settlers who moved here in the late 1800s began trapping, hunting, and eventually poisoning the wolves so that by the 1930s, nearly all of the wolves were completely wiped out in the West. About 70 years later though, there was a big push from the federal government to reintroduce the wolves into Idaho and Montana. In 1993, I was a junior high school student living in Haley, Idaho, and I remember hearing from my teachers all about the wolf reintroduction plan. We actually had a wolf week. We read wolf books, we watched wolf movies, and we learned about how great of an idea it was to reintroduce these animals into our state. It wasn't until several years later though that I realized that I and my friends were probably victims of some propaganda that the school was trying to push on its students. Wolves were controversial back then. So if you could get the kids to support the reintroduction plan, then maybe the parents will be on board as well. In the end, the wolf advocates won the debate, and in 1995, they released a grand total of 15 wolves into the wilderness of Idaho. The next year, 1996, the Nez Perce Indian tribe, who was responsible for releasing the animals into the wilderness, sent out another 20 wolves into Idaho's open territory. After they were released into the wild, they were managed by the federal government. And this is something that Idahoans have resented ever since. Idahoans hate big government. Well, over the next several years, they began to reproduce quite rapidly. By the year 2000, we had about 192 across the state. Eight years later, that number had grown to 846. And today, there are 150 packs, and with 10 to 15 wolves per pack, that puts the total number at about 1,500. On May 5th, 2011, the wolves were taken off of the endangered species list, and wolf management was given back to the state of Idaho. Wolves have always been controversial. Many Idaho residents support reducing the number of wolves, whereas lots of people outside of the state are opposed to it. Now, I actually called up the governor's office and spoke to his press secretary for about a half an hour in order to get a better understanding of why the governor signed this bill into law. And one of the things that his press secretary said to me is that one of the reasons that wolves have been controversial here in Idaho is because Idahoans have typically been against big government. The whole wolf saga started with the federal government and Idahoans felt like Uncle Sam came in and just pushed their will on the people without hearing their voices. Now, according to federal law, there must be at least 150 wolves in the state of Idaho and at least 15 packs. But here's what the new law permits. One, there is now no limit to the number of wolf tags that an individual can now purchase. Wolf trapping will be open year round on all private property. Any method of take is now accepted, and that includes hunting, trapping, and snaring. Owners of livestock can now take any action necessary to protect their property. And the law now allows the state of Idaho to hire private contractors to reduce the number of wolves in the state of Idaho. Now, here's something important. In nearly all of the articles that I read about this law, all of them said something like this. The state of Idaho calls to reduce the wolf population by 90%. Now, I read this bill several times, and there is nothing in this bill that says that the wolf population must be reduced by 90%. Here's what the law does say. Wolves may be disposed of when the population has exceeded the recovery goals of the wolf conservation and management plan. Now, their goal was 150 wolves. They reached that goal less than five years after they reintroduced the wolves into the state. Nowhere in the law does it say that the state of Idaho must reduce the wolf population by 90%. It simply allows the number of wolves to be reduced, but from what I could see in the law, it doesn't say by how much. But according to federal law, there has to be at least 150 in the state. Those are the basics. What I wanna do now though, is share with you four common arguments against the law and five arguments commonly used in support of it. And from this, I think you'll see that the issue is not as cut and dry as most people think that it is. One common argument against this bill is that this law will wipe out the wolf population in Idaho. Now the truth is, wolves are hard to hunt in Idaho. You hear them, but you rarely actually see them. 
As it is, you can already get 30 wolves per year, but nobody ever even gets close to that number. In 2019, there was only one individual who bagged 20 wolves. Six of them had killed about 10, and 16 of them had killed about six. I actually talked to a fish and game officer about this for quite a while, and he said that most wolf hunters will bag about three or four in their entire lifetime. So taking away the limit on the number of tags that can be purchased per year is not going to affect the wolf population in any way. In fact, the fishing game has been trying to reduce the wolf population for quite a number of years now, but has largely been unsuccessful. This law will simply allow them to hire private contractors to reduce that number. Second argument commonly used against this law is if we reduce the number of wolves to below 150, the federal government may step back in again and manage the wolves in the state of Idaho. Now this is a weak argument in my opinion because the very people who are in support of this law are against big government. So if we ever get close to that 150 threshold, my guess is they'll probably reduce the number of wolves that are allowed to be taken so that the federal government doesn't come back into the great state of Idaho. Three, the state legislature shouldn't be determining how many wolves can be taken. That's the fish and games job. It's actually supposed to be the fish and game who regulates the wildlife here, and there may be a bit of an overstep. If it were up to me, I probably would have left it in the hands of the fish and game. And that is why the fish and game actually didn't come out and publicly support this law. They kind of got their feelings hurt. The fourth argument typically used against this law is that this law is inhumane. The trapping and snaring of wolves is barbaric. In my opinion, this argument is ridiculous. Currently in Idaho, you can trap squirrels, muskrats, rabbits, and all kinds of other animals. And I don't see any outrage about that. In any case, it doesn't relate to this law since trapping of wolves has been allowed since 2011. So honestly, I don't think any of the arguments against this law are very strong. Here's a few reasons why some people are happy about it. In their view, wolves kill elk and our elk population is suffering because of the wolf. Now this is both true and not true. Wolves do kill elk, but this is more of a problem in certain areas and not across the state as a whole. According to a report put out by the Fishing Game in 2017, predation is identified as a prominent factor for limiting elk populations in 13 GMUs, General Management Units. In other words, in about 13% of the units in Idaho, the elk population has been affected in some way by predatory animals. Now what makes this tricky is identifying which predators have been killing the elk. In a study conducted from 2014 to 2016, the statewide annual cow survival rate was about 89%, meaning 11% of the cow elk population didn't survive the winter. Now of that 11% that died, 4% of them were killed by hunters and 3.6% were killed by predatory animals. But here's the interesting statistic. Of the 3.6% killed by animals, only about 1% were killed by wolves, whereas 2.2% were killed by cougars. In all of the fishing game studies, cougars killed about twice as many elk as wolves did. Now one of the things that you'll frequently hear Idahoans talk about is the severely reduced population of elk up in North Idaho in the Lolo area. And back in the 80s and 90s, there were tons of elk and there's great hunting stories. Today, there's hardly any elk up there. In their view, the wolves were introduced in the 90s and since then, we don't have any more elk. Now the truth is actually more complicated than that. Here's actually what happened. In 1910, there was a huge fire in Idaho called the Big Burn. Three million acres of land was burned to the ground, 86 firefighters died, and enough timber was burned to fill a freight train 2,400 miles long. Now as you probably realize, the impact of that burn on the area's habitat was pretty extensive. One thing that it did for the elk population though is that it caused them to flourish. Elk, generally speaking, flourish in open areas. They like grasslands and thick trees are not as favorable for them. So over the next several decades, those open areas caused the elk in that area to really thrive. At that time, Idaho also adopted a different strategy as it relates to fires. They began putting out all fires, whether they were started by nature or by man. The effect of that is that the trees began to grow back up so that by the 80s and 90s, the thick forests had began to return and the elk population population began to decrease. Now that's also when the wolves were introduced to the area, which is why many people think that the wolves created the reduced population in Lolo. Yes, wolves were a factor, but the habitat was a factor as was the weather. 
There were several winters in the 90s where about 80% of the elk cows died. So that had a severe effect on the elk population in that region. Now, how much did the wolves contribute to that reduced population? Well, in 2013, the Idaho Fish and Game put out a wolf control actions in the low, low zone, stating that wolf predation is the leading cause of death for cow elk older than six months. So wolves certainly did play a factor in the reduction in the elk numbers in that area. When speaking of the state of Idaho in general though, the elk population is in very good condition. The Idaho Fish and Game told me that today in Unit 39, for example, near Boise, we have about 1,500 more elk than we did back in 2016. And the deer population is also at capacity. So in some areas, wolves have played a factor in the reduction in the elk population. In other areas, the wolf impact is significantly less. The second argument frequently used in support of this law is that wolves kill cattle. So let's do away with the wolves. Now there is some truth to that, but wolf depredations on domestic animals is pretty limited in Idaho. In 2016, there were 76 confirmed depredations on domestic animals. So statewide, that's not a whole lot of wolf kills on the ranchers' animals. Number three, you'll frequently hear farmers and ranchers say that the wolves drive the elk down into the fields and the elk then become nuisances to the farmers. Now in speaking with Fish and Game about that, I was told that there is no evidence for that whatsoever. What seems to be driving the elk down into the farmer's fields is the increased use of ATV. According to the Fish and Game, there's been a tenfold increase in the use of all-terrain vehicles, and this is much more disturbing to the wildlife than trucks or just hiking around. Number four, wolves have no predators, so they just multiply and they will continue to multiply. Now there is some truth to that. Wolves are at the top of the food chain, which is why we've seen them multiply so rapidly over the past 20 years. And if left unchecked, it is possible that they could get out of hand. Fifth argument used in support of this law is we do not want the government to tell us what to do. They told us to reintroduce them. We're now telling them we're gonna reduce the wolf population. Now there is definitely some truth to that. Idahoans are against big government. So with all of that in mind, where does that leave us? Do I support this law? Well, after all of my research, I think I do, but not for the reason that you might think. According to the Wolf Management Plan of 2001, these are the goals for the wolf management team in Idaho. One, they wanna make sure the wolves don't get put back onto the endangered species list. Two, they don't want the wolf population to fall below the 150 threshold. Three, they wanna ensure that wolves can live in harmony with big game populations. If the wolf population gets too big, they're committed to reducing that number so that there's not an adverse effect on the elk and the deer and other wildlife. Now, Idaho reached all of these goals more than 20 years ago. And we have 10 times more the original number that they were aiming at. They originally were hoping for 150 wolves in Idaho. Today we have 1,500. So do I support this law? Yes, because of the fact that they've achieved all of their goals and gone way beyond what they originally were aiming for. Now, I don't think this law will reduce the wolf population by 90%. It simply gives Idaho more freedom to hire private contractors if need be in order to reduce the wolf population, particularly in areas where the wolves tend to be a nuisance. Am I totally off? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm open to having my opinion changed on this issue. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button so more people can see it, and don't forget to subscribe.